All right, well, this is a redo. This is the listing, or it's gonna be my personal ranking of the nine Westerns that John Ford, the famous director, made with John Wayne. So nine Westerns. Ford and Wayne made 14 movies together. And of those 14 films, nine of them were Westerns. And you would think that the names that are synonymous with the Westerns, that these guys would have collaborated more than that, but they made nine. And I'm going to go through the nine. I'm going to rank these nine movies, my personal ranking, and tell you why I'm ranking them the way that I am. And this list is going to be controversial because this is not what the critics would go with. And most people probably will not go with my list, but here we go. At number nine, ignore this. Okay, this is a three pack. I've got a three pack, but we'll come back to the searchers here. So how the West was won. I've got this, I'm gonna say this is number nine. The reason why I'm ranking this so low, okay, is based upon the fact that we're doing a John Ford ranking. John Ford only directed one segment of this film. So this is a big epic Western. It's a great movie. It's got a star-studded cast. Gregory Peck, Debbie Reynolds, James Stewart, Henry Fonda, John Wayne. I mean, the list goes on and on. Everybody was in this. R Richard Widmark. I mean, if you've never seen it, watch it. Great movie. But the one segment of the film that John Ford directed was the Civil War segment, the Battle of Shiloh. Okay, and John Wayne is completely miscast in this movie as General William Tecumseh Sherman. Um, somebody else should have been in that role. Probably Henry Fonda, but uh, Henry Fonda was already in another segment that was directed by, I can't remember if it was Henry Hathaway or George Marshall. They directed the other parts of the film, but anyways, yeah, um, John Wayne's miscast, and I think that probably John Ford's sequence, the Civil War sequence in the movie, The Battle of Shiloh, is probably the weakest segment of the entire film. So, number nine. Next up, all right, controversy is going to begin right here. Go ahead, bring it. Um, the Man That Shot Liberty Valance. I got this as part of this four-pack here, these four westerns, but uh, I'm going to say this is number eight. And everybody's already going to get mad. But I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Jimmy Stewart Lee, and um, Lee Marvin and uh, John Wayne in that film. It's a good movie. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. But everybody, in my opinion, overranks it big time. My biggest problems with the film is that the movie is told non-linear. It has like flashback sequences. And those for me are the parts that are terrible because one reason alone, everybody is too old to be playing their younger selves. Everybody is at least 20 years too old. So if John Ford would have made this movie in 1952 instead of 1962, I'd probably rank it higher. But I got to bring it down. The other thing is, is that everybody loves the message. You know, at the end of this, at the end of the man that shot Liberty Valance, there's the whole message where the, you know, this is the West. And when the legend becomes fact, print the legend, right? Uh, that is the whole theme of John Ford's Westerns, the mythic past. The problem is, is that he bonks you over the head with the message in this one. There's no subtlety to it. He just spells it out for you. And to me, that brings the movie down. I think that he does the same message in another movie and he does it better. All right. So number seven, The Horse Soldiers. This is a Civil War pick starring John Wayne and William Holden. And I think William Holden outacts John Wayne in this movie with the exception of one scene where John Wayne is in the bar after they get ambushed by the rebels and uh, he gets explosively angry and kind of breaks down a little bit. And I think that it's, you know, probably the best scene in the movie. Um, this is based loosely on the raid of 
Grierson, Grierson's raid, which took place, I think it was 1863, where he went back behind enemy lines to try to draw troops away from uh, Vicksburg. So, yeah, pretty good flick. I enjoy it. It's a good one. None of these are bad movies, by the way. They're all good movies. This is just my personal ranking of these and why. So next up, we've got from 1948, Three Godfathers. This was the first time I had ever seen this film. It was just a couple of days ago. Okay. And this film has Harry Carey Jr. and Pedro Armendariz. All right. In it. And they're fugitive bank robbers. They rob a bank. The uh, sheriff of the town is Ward Bond, and these guys take off, and then a posse pursues them, and along the way they come across a woman and her child, and the uh, woman, before she dies, wants these men to be the three godfathers of her child, and they agree to it, and so now it's like three cowboys and a baby, and... Uh, it's a Christmas movie. It's kind of schmaltzy. It's heartwarming. This is definitely one that you want to watch at Christmas time because it's kind of a parallel to the three wise men and the baby Jesus. So it's three fugitive bank robber cowboys and a baby. Um, I really like this one quite a bit. It, it warmed the heart. So yeah, The Three Godfathers. It's a good one. It's a good one. I enjoyed that one as well. Now we're going to get into the uh what do we go through here nine eight seven six so we're up to number five people are going to say i'm over ranking this this is number five for me is rio grande this is the third film in the cavalry trilogy this was the first movie that uh, maureen o'hara and john wayne starred in together they would go on to do a bunch of other um collaborations and in this John Wayne is playing a cavalry officer, and uh, Maureen O'Hara is his estranged wife. Their son has joined John Wayne's cavalry troop, and so this was kind of a contra or contractually obligated film for John Ford, who wanted to make The Quiet Man, and the studio agreed you can make The Quiet Man, you know, your dream project, but you're going to have to make... A western for us so he made this and i think that this movie is a bit underrated you know it's got all of your uh john ford company stock company in it you know the ben johnson harry carey jr victor mclaughlin um chill wills it's it's really a good movie quite a good movie uh the chemistry between marina hara and john wayne is great that's why they went on to be in so many movies together after this so, yeah, the Rio Grande, John Ford's Cavalry Trilogy, good one. Next up, at number four, I'm going to say She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. Uh, also, uh, this movie's from, uh, let's see, 1949, and it's got, you know, Ben Johnson, Harry Carey Jr., Victor McLaughlin, all in this movie as well. This one has Joanne Drew. Joanne Drew also starred with John Wayne in the film Red River. Howard Hawks. I think this movie's a bit underrated. I think this is one of John Wayne's best films. This film won a Academy Award for uh, Technicolor for the color film. And um, again, John Wayne plays a cavalry officer, only they've aged him up. They put some gray in his hair, and he's playing a character that's much older than he was at the time. And this movie proves that John Wayne can act, that he's not just. You know, a guy that plays the John Wayne character, but that he has some acting chops. It's a really great flick. And I really enjoy it. So there you go. She wore a yellow ribbon. Now we're going to move up to our top three films. And at number three, okay, we're going to have Stagecoach. This movie from 1939 put the Western on the map. It made it a seriously respected genre as opposed to just B flicks. Um, this is the movie that made John Wayne a star. And, you know, he's not really the lead in the movie. 
okay? Claire Trevor is the lead, and she does a great job. I mean, she still is the film. But, you know, you've got Thomas Mitchell's in this, John Carradine. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic film. John Wayne as the Ringo Kid, of course. This movie's got some incredible stunt work, and if you have not got the Criterion version of this, this restored version, you'll definitely want to pick this up and add it to your collection. I did a review of this on its own um, already. It's under my Criterion Collection playlist down there, so if you want to see me talk about this more and see the inside and in-depth, you can check on that. So, number three, Stagecoach. All right, now we're up into my personal ranking, the top two uh, John Ford and John Wayne Western collaborations. Fort Apache. Fort Apache, man, this is a... Uh, this one stars Henry Fonda as the, you know, cavalry officer Owen Thursday, who assumes command over top. Wayne gets passed up for promotion. Um, he's playing a character named Kirby York. Now, I don't know if this is the same Kirby York that's in the Horse Soldiers or, or in the uh, Rio Grande or not. Some people say that Rio Grande is the unofficial sequel to this movie. I mean, they're both named Kirby York, so who knows? I don't know. I don't know if this is a sequel to this movie or not. But anyways, he plays Kirby York. Also in this film... Uh, Owen Thursday, you know, Henry Fonda's daughter, Philadelphia, played by Shirley Temple. And uh, John Agar is also in this film as well. This is the first of the Cavalry Trilogy, and I think it's the best. And I think that this movie has the exact same theme as The Man That Shot Liberty Valance, that when the legend becomes fact print the legend now this movie's got that same message only it doesn't slap you in the face with it it's more subtle and for that it gets higher points these these all three of these cavalry films okay the three of these rio grande and she wore a yellow ribbon all filmed in monument valley of course john ford made that place famous um Absolutely fantastic movie. I love it. Number two, Ford Apache. And here we are at the number one film that John Ford and John Wayne made. The number one Western, The Searchers. Again, this is part of this Blu-ray three-pack I've got. But The Searchers right there. Uh, Jeffrey Hunter co-stars in this. And then we have, you know, the um, young Natalie Wood in this movie as well ward bond is in this film as well i mean it it's it's in color monument valley again uh john wayne returns from the civil war he's gone down into mexico it looks like to fight as a mercenary because the war has been over for some time and he comes back and he realizes that his niece has been abducted by apache indians and so the searchers they go off and search he and his nephew uh, played by Jeffrey Hunter, you know, Captain Pike from Star Trek, right? They go off looking for her. Great movie. It's a bit uncomfortable to watch. John Wayne plays a very racist, uh, violent, jaded, um, angry character uh, with a mean streak. You know, he's just, he's got a lot of darkness in him. And the closing shot of this movie the, actually, the opening and closing shot of this movie are fantastic. The end shot, of course, John Wayne is outside. He cannot enter into the house. He's basically um, an outcast. He's a pariah. The lonesome character that just doesn't fit in anymore. He can't belong. So this movie's great. Fantastic. So there you go. The nine... The nine films, the nine westerns. Now, like I said, John Wayne and, and John Ford made 14 movies together, but these are the nine westerns that they made. That's my personal ranking. Feel free to disagree. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Leave a comment below. And uh, yeah, what's your personal favorite of these? 
You know, which one, do you, where do you think I messed up? All right. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Till next time, guys. Thanks.